Hey beauties, and welcome to VLB Halloween. Today I'm going to show you how to create this voodoo priestess look for Halloween. If you love skull looks with a scary glam twist, this is the look for you for Halloween. Like this video if you're dying for this look, subscribe for more, and share with all your friends to show love. Now, let's jump right into the look. Alright, so to start out, you're going to want to get rid of those brows because when doing skull makeup, it's really appropriate to not have them. So I'm just going to show you guys my favorite concealer to cover them up. This is the Sensual Skin Enhancer from Kevin and Juan. And now we're going to start sketching out the look of our skull makeup today. I like to use a white eyeliner to sketch this out. And with most skull looks, you can use a reference photo for this but it's nice to kind of fit it custom to your face. So I created these squiggly lines that are on a skull. And these are the blank spaces around the mouth. And as you can see, I'm kind of wiping away the edges that I don't like and then redrawing them back in. That's what's really great about using an eyeliner first is if you make any mistakes, you can quickly wipe it away and really customize a skull to how it fits your face perfectly. So I'm just kind of creating these lines on either side of my face, these blank spaces. And I'm going to go in and create the nose area of the skull. You want to make two little triangles at the top and then wiggle all the way around the nose. And we're going to be filling in all these areas with black water activated paint later. Now I'm going to go in and sketch out these eye holes. I wanted to do mine a little bit more rectangular, kind of sharp and a bit crooked in a way because this is a pretty deconstructed skull look. It's not super classic, but it's more so kind of grungy. I did go in and ridge this out a bit, kind of like a skull would naturally look. They're definitely not perfect, and they're very, very rigid. So I went in and drawn some holes around the temples. You need those, of course. Still using that white eyeliner. As you can see, I'm wiping away and kind of adjusting as I go. And now you're going to want to fill in all of the spaces that you did not draw on with white water-activated paint. I normally use cream paint, but for this skull, you really do not want anything to smudge or get really creamy. You want your paint to stay in place and not move around so you can shade as you see fit, and water-activated paint is the way to go. Normally, I wouldn't use it for any of my other looks, but for this look and for skull looks, you definitely need water-activated paint, not cream paint. I'm just filling in with a small brush first, and here you can kind of correct any mistakes you've made and straighten up any edges during this process of you filling in the skull. As you can see here, I'm just kind of correcting places that I see fit, really kind of sharpening them out. Fill that baby in, yes. And now I just went in with a larger foundation brush to cover those areas and really smooth them out. Water activated paint can get kind of patchy after going over it just a few times and you need a couple layers to get a really even coat all around the face. And during this process, I did use less water to get a really opaque white finish. So here I'm just filling in that jawline. I did create two little points by the mouth just for a little bit of character to the skull. You can customize your skull however you want. There's so many different ways to do them, but this is the way I kind of was envisioning it in my mind to look like. It's pretty proportionate with my face, with a little bit of character here and there. And as you can see here, I'm just using a Q-tip to correct any spaces that I'd like. Now, I didn't want these to be too small for my skull, so I created these hollow areas a little bit bigger using a Q-tip and just kind of going over them and erasing parts I didn't want. And now we're gonna begin doing the teeth. So the teeth don't have to be perfect at all, we're just using that white water activated paint again. I wanted lots of teeth for my skull because we're doing kind of a really scary, creepy skull, and I wanted to have tons and tons of teeth. So you can see my process here of how I did it. I'm just using that water activated paint, drawing in these teeth. It's actually pretty fun. I wanted to add more, but I had to stop myself or else I would just be all teeth. <laughs> Alright, so here we're filling in those eye sockets with black water activated paint and here you can correct any areas as you see I'm doing here filling in that whole eye I'm leaving the waterline blank I'm actually going to go in with an eyeliner to fill that in now I'm filling in that nose make sure you get all those edges covered in black and you want to make sure you get the inside of your nose as well really black you don't want any of your skin showing on your face and now I'm going back in with that water activated paint to correct anything and for the waterline and the lid space, I'm just using a black eyeliner and covering it with black eyeshadow. I'm really prone to creasing with water-activated paint, so I do always set it with a shadow. 
Now we're gonna fill in those blank areas by the mouth and we're just gonna use black water activated paint to fill them in. I sort of left the front area of the teeth blank right now, but I am gonna go back and fill that in later. Here I'm filling in the lower half of the teeth and I'm going in between each tooth and just lining that out to shade it. I'm going to fill in my temple area with the black paint and now I'm going to start drawing in little characteristics of the skull. A lot of skulls have breaks in them and cracks so that's what I'm doing and to give the skull a little bit of character, make it look kind of angry, I went in and created these kind of brow bone um, things and I shaded them out with black shadow. I'm just filling that in with some black water activated paint to really contrast that against the white. Go back in with your shadow and paint and it really gives a nice contrast. Here I'm just drawing in some stresses around the skull and shading on the forehead to cast a shadow down as if like a light was shining on the forehead. Just some indentations here and there. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut that jawline. You can actually make your jaw or skull smaller by doing this and create some more depth with it. I'm also going to go in and cover my ears up so it doesn't show. And now I'm going in with the gray eyeshadow and just shading underneath all of the deepest parts of the skull and all of those little characteristics we added. I also wanted to add some more breaks in the skull and cracks. And these are a bit cartoonish because they're so thick, but that's kind of what I was going for. I do this a lot with a lot of my looks, I kind of add a little bit of a Tim Burton feel to them and I want to do that to the skull again. So I'm going in and shading underneath all of these cracks. The more you shade, the more three-dimensional this skull will look, so just remember that. You want to go back in and shade as much as you can with your white, with gray, with black, and this is going to make the skull really pop out. Here I'm using the white water activated paint to highlight all of those areas that are underneath black. So I went under the eyes on the cracks and highlighted with the white. This is going to make everything pop out and move forward. So for the teeth, I used a black eyeshadow just to line them individually. And it's super simple, you just need a small eyeshadow brush to do this and go right in between each tooth and line them. And also in the center of the two rows of teeth, you want to line that out. And I did end up dragging these teeth upward in a triangular shape just to make them look really long. This kind of creates that root of the tooth that you see with a lot of skull makeup and a lot of skull reference photos. So I used some black eyeshadow and really deepen up those back teeth. I wanted to make them look really round and like they were actually on the skull. So that really makes them look very three-dimensional. I also went back in with that black eyeshadow and deepened up every crack of the tooth just to make it pop forward a little bit more. And now I'm just going in and I'm shading around the teeth and this is also going to make them look really three-dimensional. I'm just going around the tops of them and rounding them out a little bit so they're not so square with a lot of skull teeth. You'll notice that the teeth are kind of all different shapes so if they're not perfect it's actually really good and more realistic. So here I'm just shading all around the skull. Like I said, you can never get enough shading in, so go back in and shade wherever you see fit, preferably like near the highlighted areas and then um, around the skull, just like what I'm doing here. I went back in with that white and further highlighted. You can see I highlighted underneath those eye sockets, around the eyes, and around the darkest parts of the skull. I really just kind of popped it with that highlight. And here on the chin, I am popping that once again with the white water activated paint. And I did add some glitter to these teeth. I wanted them to kind of glisten like they were wet, so I went in with some iridescent glitter. And I also went on the brow bone area with this as well. And I couldn't stop there. I actually went over the eyes with this and really kind of popped that on the eyes. So they're kind of glowing in the dark, which is really cool. So if you're going to a Halloween party, this will look really nice at night. I'm applying some mascara and then for lashes, I popped on some feather lashes. Here I'm just kind of dusting away that glitter because I didn't want it to be too much under the eyes. And there we go with some Halloween contacts. We gotta have those in. These really bring the skull to life. And now I'm popping on those feather lashes, sticking them right on. And for accessories, I didn't paint my body, I just wanted to paint my face. 
I popped on this feather collar and then a wig. And this wig is white. I just wanted to add like a headband to it and tease it up to make it really, really big. Pop some glitter on the body. And then I added some feather gloves and some gold cups. And our look is complete. I hope you all love this Halloween voodoo priestess look. And if you love it, be sure you like this video, subscribe for more, and share with all your friends. And I will see you in my next Halloween tutorial. Oh, 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 oh,